Hello, welcome to Sad and Fairy Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Blue Light Hours by Bruna Dante Slobato. This is a book coming out October 14th, 2024 from Grove Press. It's a literary fiction novella. I received this art from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. This book will either warm your heart or break it. Maybe both. <laughs> what is it about? In a small dorm room at a liberal arts college in Vermont, a young woman settles into the warm blue light of her desk lamp before calling the mother she left behind in northeastern Brazil. 4,000 miles apart and bound by the angular confines of a Skype window, they ask each other a simple question. What's the news? Off screen, little about their lives seems newsworthy. The daughter writes her papers in the library at midnight, eats in the dining hall with the other international students, and raises her hand in class to speak in a language the mother cannot understand. The mother, meanwhile, preoccupies herself with natural disasters, her increasingly poor health, and the heartbreaking possibility that her daughter might not return to the apartment where they had always lived together. Yet, in the blue glow of their computers, the two women develop new rituals of intimacy and caretaking, from drinking whiskey together in the middle of the night to keeping watch as one slides into sleep. As the warm colors of New England autumn fade into the endless winter snow, each realizes that the promise of spring might mean difficult endings rather than hopeful beginnings. Sometimes it's nice to read soft, gentle stories that are about the connections we make with other people. In this case, it's a mother and daughter. This book is lovely. There's no tragedy, no real conflict, no drama. It's just about one young woman on her own for the first time and an empty nester learning to be alone again. It's a story about growth and growing away from someone, but not in the sense that you're leaving them, but that you are both adapting to your new relationship and how it functions differently. I say this book will warm or break your heart because if you have a great relationship with a parent or guardian, you will probably find a lot about this book that makes you smile or nod an understanding. If you don't have that relationship with a parent or in fact have either a terse or tense or a non-existent relationship, this book will make you wish you had with the mother and daughter in the story share. The heartbreaking part is knowing you won't have that <laughs> unless you have kids of your own and develop it, you know, that way. It's well... <laughs> I found this book hard to read for reasons I won't get into, but I also thought it was really, really a sweet story. <laughs> this book was compelling to me because I understood both perspectives. I did think they both were a bit too self-isolated and need to get out more, though I understand why they didn't. But I also could sympathize with the daughter's emotions regarding being away from home for the first time and being a mother myself, I could empathize with the sadness, yet also the pride and vicarious joy of having your child out and experiencing new things. In this way, they were both understandable and relatable characters. Not a lot happens in this book though. You know, there isn't much of a plot or a storyline. It's honestly just the daughter living her day-to-day -day life with small moments of wonder, you know, like experiencing snow for the first time and the mother having a few passages about her life back in Brazil. And then there are conversations, some that feel like a chore, others fun and full of connectivity, like a chore to them, not to the reader, which serve to develop them and their relationship. I was surprised that they wanted to talk on the phone every day. Like, I don't think there's anyone that who, who I would do that with, like, I don't know, like, oh wait, <laughs> there is, actually there is one person, <laughs> my husband, of course, <laughs> so actually when my sister lived with us, she, she made fun of us because like my husband would call me on his way home from work and we would chat for a good half an hour or like even until he pulled up at the house and then we would just keep talking, like he'd, sometimes he'd come in the door on his phone talking to me and hang up and we'd just keep talking, you know, until he started working closer from home, we did this, you know, for like, um, 10 years. Like we did this for pretty much every day. And when he worked out of province, you know, I think we did talk on the phone at least every other day. And then when I was commuting, cause we both had like a, an hour and a half commute, like both ways. So like three hours in the car, we pretty much talked through our entire commutes on the way home, just as something to do. And because Toronto has one of the worst commutes, um, like cities to commute in and out of in the world, you can look it up. People are like, Oh, LA is so bad. It's like, no, Toronto is comparable like it's it's awful it is awful it stressed me out so much I'm so glad I don't have to do it anymore <laughs> but anyway you know we would talk on our commutes um so and and I mean we've also been on three massive road trips just the two of us so so I guess I guess I do understand their need to talk to each other every every day because I, I don't have that with a parent I don't have that with a sibling or friends really but I guess there is one person so I guess I do kind of get it
Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so, I mean, see, like this book, despite being quiet and subdued, spurs you to really consider your own life. The story is so non-evasive. You're almost forced to bring yourself into it. It also has this sort of melancholic feel, like a drowsiness to it that almost puts you in the same mindset as the characters, you know, when they when they go to make their calls, you know, at the end of a long day, like they're kind of tired, but they're, they've got just enough energy to do that. And the book kind of makes you kind of feel this in like a mimetic way. The book really draws you in and it kind of exemplifies what I really like about literary fiction. There was also a really funny line. <laughs> this is an arc so it might change in the final but my mom posted a picture of grandma standing in a garden smiling at a flower and wearing a crochet bucket hat taken right before her death a year ago. So that's where grandma went after death to live on the internet. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was so funny. Uh, so yeah, an excellent book if you want something short, non-confrontational, heartwarming, and pondersome. Thank you again to the uh, publisher for the e-arc. I really, really appreciated it. And yeah.